Good evening and welcome to the live Bible stream, uh, live stream Bible study of the Abundant Love Church. I am Pastor Gary Bush. We are here tonight and we've come into this sanctuary to praise the Lord. We come to make our prayers and to lift our petitions to him. And we have come together to study the word of the Lord. The Bible tells us that the word of God is profitable for us so that the men and women of God can be equipped to every good work. And so we come to get equipped this evening so that we can do the work of God. Thank you. We invite you in to worship with us this evening. And we're going to have our opening selection this evening from our minister, uh, Winston Pearson. Would you all receive Minister Pearson with a hearty amen? amen. Praise the Lord, saints. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad it is. And be, oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad it is that this is the day this is the day that the lord has made i will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart i will enter his court with praise i will say that this the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, rejoice, rejoice, again I say rejoice, 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 again I say rejoice, 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 again. I say rejoice, 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 again I say rejoice. Come on, clap your hands in here, everybody. Certainly this is the day that the Lord has made. We will find reasons in this day to rejoice and be glad. Shall we pray? Father, it is in the name of Jesus that we come into this house this evening. This is the house that is called by your name. You said that my house shall be called a house of prayer. And so first and foremost, Lord, we look to you and we lift our prayer. You said that we're to give thanks in all things because this is the will of God concerning us. And so, Father, this evening we thank you. We thank you for this day. Thank you for another opportunity to come into the house of the Lord and to lift our voices. We thank you for another opportunity to worship you and to give you praise for the great God that you are and the great things that you have done. So we have come here collectively this evening to praise your name. We praise you according to your excellent greatness. We praise you. According to your mighty acts, we praise you, Lord, for your goodness and for your grace and for your mercy. We bless you and we give your name all the praise. We thank you because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, the people of God run into your name. We find safety and security in your name, Father. So as we come to worship you this evening, be God here among us. Let your anointing be felt in our midst. Show yourself strong in behalf of your people. Let the weak say I'm strong. 
by the power of your word. Lift every bow down head. Strengthen every feeble knee. Comfort every feeble mind. Let your will be done. Have your way here this evening. Come on in with your power. Come in with your glory. Come in with your power. Come in with your glory. Let your spirit fill this room. Fill this room and fill every vessel. Fill every vessel sit upon each of us as cloven tongues of fire as you did on the day on the day of Pentecost fill every person to thee this evening Lord every heart every mind every spirit subject to your will break up fallow ground turn the direction of minds to serve the true and the living God if there be anyone here this evening or listening by stream that doesn't know you in the pardon of their sins let the convicting word and convincing word of the power of God and the gospel turn their hearts this evening in the name of Jesus now father we come to bless you and we pray that you would bless us let your grace be upon all that we say and all that we do this evening and we love you and we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus name and the Lord's people said thank God come on clap your hands and thank God thank God look over at your neighbor and say I love you with the love of the Lord tell them again say I love you with the love of the Lord I love you I love you I love you Lord today the reason I love you is because you cared for me in such a special way that's why I praise you and I lift you up I magnify your name and that's the reason my heart is filled with praise let's sing just love song to the Lord I love you I love you Lord today I love you I love you I love you I love you Lord today because you cared for me in such a special way and yes I praise you I'll lift you up I'll magnify your name hey, that's why my heart is filled with praise come on lift your voice with us I love you I love you I love you I love you Lord today because you cared for me in such a special way and yes I praise you I lift you up I'll magnify your name your name that's why my heart is filled with praise my mind my heart my soul my mind my heart my soul my soul belongs to you you paid the price for me way back on Calvary that's why I praise you I'll lift you up I'll magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise that's why my heart that's why my heart is filled with praise that's why my heart that's why my heart is filled with praise we give you glory we give you glory that's why that's why my heart is filled with praise oh, that's why that's why my heart is filled with praise come on clap your hands right there come on let that praise out of your heart we praise you we praise you we praise you glory to God amen that's the reason my heart Amen. It's filled with praise. How many have a heart of praise this evening? Has the Lord been good to you? Has he made a way for you? Has he opened a door for you? Amen. Amen.
Amen. Whereof we are glad. Amen. All right. At this time, our program calls for our announcements. Would you all receive uh, Sister Natasha Hillier with a hearty amen? Good evening, everyone. We would like to welcome everyone out tonight to our Wednesday night Bible study. Thank you for all pressing your way out to the sanctuary, and thank you for the viewers tuning in this evening. If you are in the Fort Wayne area, our live streams are open. You are more than welcome to come join us in our regular worship service. We have been surveying through the epistles of the New Testament. Um, for the next couple of weeks, we will continue to study from the book of Romans. This evening, we will study out of chapter, or try to finish, chapter 14. And next week, our plan is to review chapter 15. Now, if you are not on our email list and you would like to survey through the epistles with us during Bible study, you can comment below with your email address or you can email us at AbundantLove at Frontier.com to receive a bi-weekly outline to follow along. Our Women's Fellowship will meet this Saturday, June the 17th here at the church from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. There will be a taco bar, so please see Evangelist Monique Glasby for side dishes that may be needed. Amen? Our quarterly outreach, Soul Saturday, will be on June 24th here at Abundant Love. That will be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We will have a free car wash. We have hot dogs and chips, and we also have the best thing for you, prayer. You are more than welcome to come out to receive prayers from the saints. Again, that's June 24th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Then on June 25th, which is the, the next following day, which is a Sunday, we will travel to Dupree Memorial at 11 a.m. Our very own bishop will preach the word of God for their 23rd pastoral anniversary. Now, if you shop at Kroger, please make sure your information is updated. Um, with the Kroger program, it gives back to your church. Some of the proceeds comes back to the church uh, just because you're shopping with Kroger. So please see one of the secretaries to update your information or to get make sure you're registered with the Kroger Give Back program. Our sick and recovering and special prayer request includes Kiara Casey, We'll continue to pray for Albert Jewell, Rayfield Martin, Travion Hilliard, Joseph Gray, and Jackie Jones. We have one birthday a couple of days ago. Although she's in Michigan, we're still going to celebrate her. That will be Sister Brittany Jones. Her birthday was on the 12th. <laughs> Happy birthday, sister. For everyone that's already contributed to Abundant Love Ministries, we thank you so much for all your contributions. Um, there are many ways to give to your church nowadays. These ways will be given to you during our offering time. Um, and I will also comment below the different ways to give. Amen. If you can, join us in our regular worship services on Sundays. We have Sunday School live stream at 9 a.m followed by Sunday school class here in the sanctuary at 9.50 a.m. And then that is followed by our morning worship at 10.45 a.m. on Sundays. Then on Mondays, we have corporate prayer at 6.30 p.m. And on Wednesdays, we have intercessory prayer at 6 p.m., followed by our Disciples Academy Bible study at 6.30 now, if you miss any of the live streams, all of these are archived for you. You can find the archives or the streams on our Facebook page, Abundant Love Church. You can also find them on our YouTube channel, capital A, capital L Ministries. These are all of our announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. And now in the hands of the praise team. Man, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. 
Let everything that hath breath praise the name of the Lord. Can we give God a hand clap of praise tonight? As we stand to our feet, let's sing this song together. I love the Lord. How many love the Lord on tonight? Hallelujah. He has been good. He is merciful. We thank him for his grace, for keeping us in our right mind, for his angels of protection, for all of his many, all of his goodness. Hallelujah. What can we render unto him for all of his mercy? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
praise his name. Come on and clap your hands for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many love the Lord? Thank you, Lord. Amen. How many know that the Lord heard your cry? Amen. And he didn't turn a deaf ear, but he pitied every groan. Hasten to his throne means that I'll hurry. Go in a hurry to his throne. I'll hasten. I'll hasten to his throne. His throne. I'll hasten. your hands everybody right there I love the Lord he heard my cry the song that said that this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and then delivered him out of all of his fears aren't you glad that God hasn't given us the spirit of fear but he's given us the spirit of love the spirit of power and the spirit of a sound mind, a sound mind that is able to make wise and prudent decisions as we walk with the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Mother Kyra, for such a moving song this evening. We're glad to be in the house of the Lord this evening. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord this evening? Amen. No wonder David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go where? Into the house of the Lord. Amen. There's some things that you can get in God's house that you can't get in any other house. And so we're happy to be here this evening. David also said one thing, have I desired of the Lord? He said that one thing I'm going to seek after that I may dwell I don't want to just visit. I want to be in his presence all the time. I want to dwell in the house of the Lord. I want to behold the beauty of the Lord. And then I want to make inquiry. I want to ask my questions, get my questions answered in his temple. Amen. How many know that Jesus is the answer? Amen. doesn't matter what the question is. Jesus is the answer. Andre Crouch said, for the world today above him, there is no other why because Jesus is the way and so we're happy to be here this evening and we are surveying our way we said survey but we might be sashaying through the New Testament we taking our time amen that's what the old you know it's what the old folks say when you was walking and you wasn't walking fast and you was just kind of swinging from side to side they would say you were sashaying Man, so we're not in any particular hurry. We're trying to get all the meat out of the scripture. Amen. Amen. I can remember when I was smaller. Amen. I would be eating chicken wings and uh, I wouldn't clean the wing. My, my, my mother would say to me, say, boy, say there's still some meat on that bone. Amen. So we're trying to make sure we clean the bones this evening. Make sure we get all the meat of the word. And how many know it's time to eat meat? Don't get me wrong. If you're a babe in Christ, you want to have that milk, but you want to move as rapidly as you can so that you can get on the meat of the word. The Bible says that meat is for them that are of full age, which means it's for mature people. And if you're going to do any type of work for the Lord, you need your strength. And so you need... Uh, you need the meat of the word. Amen. Not that you can't eat donuts and Twinkies, but you can't make a meal and a menu and a diet off of Twinkies. Amen. And donuts. Amen. Pop-Tarts. Uh, no, you got to have something. Uh, the old folks said that's going to stick to your ribs. Man, something's going to stay with you a while. 
All right. Um, we are finishing, hopefully, this evening, the chapter 14 of the book of Romans. And of course, if you don't have a handout, you certainly can have a handout. All you have to do is send your email address to our email address, which is AbundantLove at Frontier.com, requesting to be put on our email list, and we will send you a copy of the bi-weekly handout that we send. In fact, we sent chapters 15 and 16 today, so it should already be in your inbox. I sent it this evening just before I came to church. And so if we finish 14 and have time to go to 15, you will already have the handout. Amen? All right, so uh, certainly get on, uh, give us your email. We will not fill your inbox up with a lot of junk mail. If you are like me, you already get enough junk mail in your inbox. So we are not, um, uh, unless you want our church advertisements, we won't send them to you. If you listen to the announcer here, you'll know what's going on with us. But we want to make sure that you have the word of the Lord. It is a handout prepared by yours truly. It is not exhaustive, but I have taken every verse in every chapter and I have pulled out of the verse the main topics of the verse so that we can study as we go along. I study some of them. I mention some of them. Some of them I do not, but they are in your possession so that you can, in your own time, study so that we can get a good understanding of the word. Amen? Amen. How many know we have to understand the word? Amen. Come on. Come on. This is the day. you got to understand it. Because anything you don't understand, you cannot operate. Amen. Some of us have tablets. And some of us have cell phones. And they have features that we don't even know they have because we haven't read the manual. Amen. And we don't know how to work them. Amen. I found out uh, that there is an assistant. There's a voice assistant on my phone. So instead of getting an appointment and tapping and typing my appointments into my calendar, all I have to do is type the, tap this assistant, tell it what I wanted, the appointment I want to make, and it'll make the appointment automatically. So some of these conveniences are good for us, but you can't work it if you don't know how to work it. So we have to know the word. The word that you know and understand is the word that's going to work for you. Amen, somebody. All right, so we're in chapter 14. We actually stopped, I think, at about verse 16, did we not? Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to elaborate them, but I'm going to send her back to verse number 13, and we're going to read down to there so that we get context by the time we get to verse number 17. In this particular portion of Romans 14, it is talking about individual responsibility, not causing another person to stumble. Back when I was young, we thought it was funny to trip somebody when they were coming by so that they would fall. That was back when we could fall and just bounce up and not get hurt. Somebody trip us now? Amen. And, and if, you over, if you over 30, you ought to be doing everything you can not to tumble. Amen, because tumbles are costly now, and you can get hurt. And certainly, you don't really don't need any help to fall. You can fall all by yourself. But as saints of God, as we walk with the Lord, we want to be sure that we don't cause other people to stumble. If you cause people to stumble and lose their life, the Bible refers to it as having blood on your hands. You have caused... Um, um, you have caused something to occur in their life uh, that maybe they have to deal with for quite some time in the future. And so we want to be sure that we don't do anything, nothing purposely, nothing maliciously, nothing intentionally to cause another person to stumble away from the Lord. Amen? Amen. I was listening a little earlier today to Bishop Noel Jones. Bishop Noel Jones is one of my favorite preachers. And in his message today, he said we have to be very, very careful of the things we do. 
he said, because a decision that you can make in 15 minutes can affect you for 15 years. And so that's the way falls are. We, sometimes a fall that happens in a moment can affect a person for a long time. So we want to be sure. We don't want anybody to make us fall, and we don't want to make anyone else fall. Amen? Okay, all right. Romans 14, verse number 13. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore. As the saints of God, we're not supposed to judge anybody, so let's not judge. But judge this rather. But if you have to judge something, this is what you want to judge. That no man put a stumbling block. That no man or no woman put a stumbling block. Or an a, occasion to fall in his brother's way. Or an way. occasion to fall in your brother's or your sister's way. You want to make sure... Um, the one scripture says about making straight paths for your feet. You don't only want straight paths for your own feet. You want to make sure that the path of your neighbor is clear of obstructions. Read. I know and I'm persuaded by the Lord. This is what I know and I'm persuaded of this by the Lord. That there is nothing unclean of itself. Everything that God put in the earth in and of itself has a righteous pur purpose and it's not evil. And mm -hmm. evil sometimes comes of how you use it. Money is not wrong, but you can use money for evil purposes. Amen. Are you all with me? So it's talking, about, it's talking about the original intent that God put in everything in the earth. The Bible said that when he made the earth, everything he made, it said, was good and very good. Read. But to him that esteems anything to be unclean. But to him that esteems, if, if you have an experience or an environment where something has been deemed unclean to you. To him it is unclean. You, okay, so if, if you don't think pork is all right, it's unclean to you. And then you hold what you believe. You hold your own conviction. But now you cannot spread your conviction to everyone if it doesn't have a biblical basis. So uh, in the Old Testament, there was something called the right of the Nazarite. And a Nazarite was a person who had uh, the anointing of God upon their lives because of a certain aspect that they kept. Samson's right of the Nazarite was that he was not supposed to cut his hair. His strength was in his hair. Now, everybody didn't have that right. Only Samson had it. And it was wrong for Samson when it wasn't wrong for other people. So many times today when you have a call on your life, particularly people that are prayer intercessors, in my opinion, prayer intercessors have the right of fasting because many of the things that they have to intercede for to loose the stronghold, the Bible says this kind goeth not out but by Fasting and prayer. So one of the rights of a real prayer intercessor is that God will particularly and frequently put them on the diet or a consecration of some sorts so that they can go in the gap for other people. And there are other things. Um, I won't talk about any of my own personal uh, things. Well, maybe, maybe I'll mention one. It's not wrong for everybody to go to the theater or the movies, but I don't go. And... Uh, I do. Do you watch movies? Yes, I watch movies, but I watch them in the confines of my home. The reason I don't go to movie theaters because uh, sometimes there's a lot of things going on in the movie theater that have nothing to do with the movie. Amen, church. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And then, even though I go to see a certain picture, they show trailers. And sometimes I don't want to be exposed to some of the trailers. Now, now, I'm not saying it's wrong for anybody else. I'm just telling you what Pastor does. Pastor uh, just doesn't do it. And that's, that's my right uh, that I hold. And I, don't, I try not to break that. Amen? Okay, all right. Having said that, uh, the right of the Nazarite is not for everyone. But um, if he deems it that, then it's wrong to him. Read but if thy brother be grieved with thy meat. But if you're doing something that grieves your brother, if your brother has a right and you're doing something to violate his, for, the, for, for practical purposes, don't do it in his midst. Don't do it in front of him. If you believe in drinking wine, <laughs> well, I, I'm probably going to use, I'm probably going to use something else. Uh, uh, if, if you, if you believe, um, well, 
if you believe something is not wrong and, and a, a weaker saint believes that it is wrong, you don't want to offend them by doing it in front of them. Some, somebody may believe you're not supposed to eat chocolate. I love chocolate. Chocolate don't bother me. And so, uh, but if you don't, if you think eating chocolate is wrong, then I just won't eat chocolate when I'm around you. Amen. That, 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 kind, of, that, that kind of help. Okay, all right, read. Now walketh thou not charitably. Because if you do it in front of your weak brother or sister, you're not being charitable to them. You're not being nice or kind or benevolent to them. And how many know we're supposed to be benevolent to everybody? That's supposed to be a trademark of the saints. We're supposed to be given, the Bible says, to hospitality. Given to it means we're always leaning in a direction of treating people good. Read. Destroy not him with thy meat. Don't destroy your brother or your sister by eating meat in front of him. Read. For whom Christ died. Because Christ died for him just like he died for you. Read. Let not then your good be Here, evil okay, spoken Okay, this is where we of. stop. So don't let what's good for you be evil for your brother. That's what let not your... Now I heard so many interpretations of that particular verse. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. But in context, what it means is something that is good for you. Don't let it be evil for your brother. Amen. Man, now I know, I know you can go in the tavern or in the bar and get changed for a dollar and come back out and not drink anything. I know you can. But you will overthrow the faith of somebody if you go in there to get changed because they may think you went in there to do something else. Okay, and we don't want to do that. Amen? All right, read. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Because the kingdom of God does not hinge on carnal things. The kingdom of God is not a list of do's and don'ts is what it means. Now, even though there are do's and don'ts, the list of do's, do's and don'ts is not the kingdom of God. There are people who don't even believe in Christ, who live more disciplined, ruled lives than we do. People in the martial arts, there are certain things that they won't do, certain things they won't eat with their body in, and take in their body, certain things they won't partake of to discipline that particular. So the fact that we are restricting what we eat and what we drink, that's not the kingdom of God. It's not meat and drink, read. But righteousness. What the kingdom of God really is, righteousness. That and peace. The righteousness only comes through Jesus Christ. Is peace that only Jesus gives. And joy in the Holy Ghost. And joy in the Holy Ghost, which is the spirit of Christ. So the kingdom of God is all about Christ. Amen. Read. For he that is in these things. Because he that is in these things, which things? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. He that is in these, read. Serves Christ is acceptable to he, God. He serves Christ and is acceptable to God. Now, I want to pause there for a minute. Because the kingdom of God, when we talk about the kingdom of God, coming to church and operating in an auxiliary and paying your tithes and giving your offering, all that is good. But when it comes to the kingdom of God, those are things that pertain to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is righteousness, which is Christ stamping righteousness on your life. Righteousness is only attained by Jesus Christ, which means if we don't have Jesus' stamp on our life, we are not acceptable to him. Amen. Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. What? That you present your, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. Here it is. That's what it is. How do you get holy? You can't get holy by yourself. You can't get righteous by yourself. Thanks be unto God. He causes us to become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So the kingdom of God is righteousness, and then it is peace. Can I, can I help you here? Uh, it's hard to be righteous when you don't have peace. Okay, that's, that's tough. And we talked about peace a little bit on Sunday morning. You have to have peace with God. 
You have to have peace within yourself, and then you have to have peace with other people. The Bible says, uh, peace, Jesus said, peace I give you. My peace give I unto you, not as the world gives. So we don't have the superficial peace that the world offers. We have a peace that is granted to us by the Spirit of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God will calm you down. It put your fire out. You can be hot as a firecracker, but when the Spirit of God come in, it'll take control. It'll discipline you so that you don't go off everywhere. So, so it, it's, it's righteousness. It is peace, the peace of God. And here it is. This is what I'm striving for. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Sometimes you can be in the middle of turmoil and be at peace. You don't even know why you're at peace with it, but you're at peace with it. Amen. I told you all the story about when my youngest son got killed. There, I felt something like a sheet draped down over me, and it gave me a peace and a calmness that I've never experienced before. There is a place in God. Trust me. There's a place in God where you can arrive where things don't offend you. Okay, here, here's the verse. I heard you. I heard you. You don't believe that? Okay. <laughs> the Bible says, great peace have they that love thy law. You got to love the word. And nothing shall offend them. You, there's a place in the word you can get where you understand that God is always in control and no matter what happens in your life, I'm not saying that you're not concerned, but you ain't going all off and worrying and having a hissy fit over it because you understand God is in control. Look, somebody say, he's always in control. Always in control. Even when it looked like he's not in control. He's in control. Amen. God is not up in heaven wringing his hands and wiping sweat off his brow over what's happening on the earth. No, he kicked back in his throne. He got his foot on the earth. The Bible says the earth is his footstool. He's relaxed. He ain't worried about nothing because he know everything going to work just like he said. And when it's all over, he's going to lean over to Jesus and say, okay, time to go get him. Jesus is going to get up and come up and meet us in the middle of the air. The Bible said, take us away and so shall we ever. Be with the Lord. And then it told us, comfort one another with these words. Sometimes when people going through, the old, folk, the old preacher used to always preach, he would always end up his message saying, after a while, it's going to all be over. <laughs> Y'all remember saying, after a while. And it's true. After a while. These people living like they think this earth going to last forever. There is no way. With the direction our world is going, there's no way it can last forever the way it is. A house divided, a nation divided, a world divided against this cell cannot stand. Amen. Uh, uh, America, y'all better wake up. I, I, at the risk of being political, I'm going to make this statement. And we have a former president uh, who's uh, uh, soon to be on trial for some things. And the Lord said to me, said, he's not by himself. He's got half the nation with him. Yep, now think about that for a minute. Half the nation has taken his position. Knowing some of the facts, they've still sided with him. A house, a nation, divided against itself? If God don't do something to rectify this division, we're going to have some real trouble in our, we already got trouble, but we're going to have some real trouble in our nation. Amen. Don't you think civil war can't occur again? It can. Amen. So we, you know. When the foundations are shaken, what can the righteous do? The righteous can pray. Yeah. Amen. That God will turn some of this stuff away from us. And, and, so, and so we, uh, as the people of God, we want to make sure that we're in righteousness. We want to make sure that we have the peace of God in us. 
That doesn't mean you never get mad. It just means you don't stay mad. And it means you don't get mad without just cause. Let me help you here. Because some people think you're sinning when you get mad. You are not. There are times you are supposed to be mad. When you tell the children come in at 9 o'clock and they stroll up at 11, you should be upset. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. When you tell them don't touch my food in the refrigerator and you come home and it's gone, you should be upset. The Bible says, watch this, be angry. That means there are occasions where you're supposed to be angry. But it says don't sin. So don't start calling people out of their name. Don't start, what they say, don't start throwing hands. Y'all heard that song say, try God, don't try me. Because I throw hands. Okay, no, we don't throw hands. We're not supposed to be brawlers. Ain't nobody saying nothing here. Y'all quiet. Okay, but there is a place where you're supposed to be angry, but that anger is supposed to be disciplined. Are you with me? So we're to be, be righteous. We're to have the peace of God and joy where? In the Holy Ghost. Not just joy. Joy in the Holy Ghost. How many know what joy in the Holy Ghost is? Joy in the Holy Ghost is just in the presence of God in your life. And so you can have stuff going wrong in your house and still have the joy of the Lord. You can be out of money and still have the joy of the Lord. You can have sickness in your body and still have. The joy of the Lord. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So you want to keep the joy of the Lord. The Bible says rejoice, and again I say rejoice. rejoice. So rejoice is something that the saints should do. That's what the old folk meant when they said, I got joy in sorrow. Yes. I never understood that as a child. How can you be sad and have joy at the same time? Because the sorrow I have is not going to last forever, but this joy I have does. Just joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me in the world. Aren't you, aren't you glad the world can't take it away? The world can't take it away, but if you ain't careful, you can give it away. You can let somebody come in, you can let somebody come in your space, uh, uh, come in your space, upset your apple cart, and you'll be all upset and still in the joy of the Lord. Amen. You, the, you know, if them apples gone, you can get some more apples. Keep your joy. Okay, all right, read, read, read. Acceptable to God and approved okay. of men. If you if you have if you have righteousness. If you have peace and you have joy in the Holy Ghost, the Bible says you'll be acceptable unto God and approved of men. And approved of men. Watch this. The Bible says that Jesus, uh, in the book of John, it says that after that incident in the temple when his parents couldn't find him, uh, and he said to them, what, didn't you know I should be about my father's business? The Bible says they didn't understand the saying. A lot of people miss this. But it says from that point on, Jesus went and was subject to them. That means Jesus obeyed. And then the Bible said he grew in stature and in favor with God and man. So when you grow in favor with God, I want you to understand something. To grow in favor with men doesn't mean all men. But it means the people of God. Real saints of God love to see God show up on you. When the Spirit of the Lord, uh, in fact, the Bible says that there's a crown for everybody that loves his appearing. That's not just his appearing in the sky. Every time his anointing shows up in a worship service, every time his anointing shows up on a teacher or a preacher, and that excitement you get, and you, there's a crown for being excitement, excited anytime you see God has shown up in something. Amen, somebody. So he, he's acceptable to God and approved by men. Approved means they confirm you. That you're good, that you're righteous. It's good, not just saints take notice of you when you live right. Unsaved people do. They act, don't fool yourself. They watching you. Okay. They watching to see if you're taking the pens and the paper clips at work. 
They watching to see if you come back from lunch break on time. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. They won't say it out loud, but they, but they watching. They watching. They watching. And then if you do something that's too far out of pocket, they'll say, I thought you were saved. That's how, that's how close they watch us. I got a, I got a, I got a couple of, I got a couple of neighbors that, uh, <laughs> well, let me say it like this. Uh, they make sure the wrong kind of music ain't coming out of my house. <laughs> I was working on my car one time. I didn't change it to that station. It just, I don't know how the radio got on that station, but it was on that station while I was working on the car. My neighbor say, uh, is that your music when I listen to it? I said, no, that ain't, no, that ain't my music. <laughs> no, that's not my music. All right. Listen, I wasn't paying any attention to it, but she was. And so people, people act like they're not paying attention. <laughs> I, I ain't even tell y'all what station it was. I, just, I, I was just, but you, you all know I listen to gospel talk radio. That's what I listen to, man, not very often. Uh, every now and then I listen to 94.1, but, um, well, I better let that alone. Because <laughs> some, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes that station can sound like, uh, <laughs> ne next chapter, next chapter we'll talk about spirit. We'll talk about spiritual songs next chapter. That'll give us a little more understanding because, it, you know, I, I, read, read, go ahead and read. <laughs> Let us therefore follow after the things which make so, for peace. So, since we're acceptable to God and approved by men, let us follow after or pursue. Now, if you don't have this, listen to Sunday's message because this is what I preached last Sunday. Let us pursue Things that make for peace. Now, I want to pause it just a minute. I don't want to belabor this, but I need to bring this home. Even if somebody else is not pursuing peace, you have to pursue peace. Okay. It, it's hard for us to imagine and believe that some people are trying to start an argument with us. Some people are not satisfied until they have you in an argument. And they'll, per, and they'll pursue you with it. But even though they are pursuing you for division, we always have to pursue the remedy. Now let me give you a good example. When people come to you complaining, don't join their complaint. Because Two complainers don't make peace. Okay, peace, there has to be a peacemaker when there is division. Okay, back now, you know, it's not like this anymore, but it was when I was younger. If you had a best friend and y'all had been best friends for a long time, and you and your best friend got into it and wouldn't be talking to each other, Somebody who was a friend of both of you all that come and talk to both of you. Say, you know what, you, you, you and Johnny, y'all need to fix that. You know how long y'all been friends? You know, y'all shouldn't, have, whatever that is, y'all need to fix that. And then they'll go over to Johnny. Say, Johnny, say, you and him, you know how long y'all been? That, that person is a peacemaker. He's trying to bring sides that have had a problem back together. Are you, you got it? Okay, that's what a peacemaker is. Now watch this, watch this. Matthew 5 says in the Beatitudes, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called children of God. A child of God is a peacemaker. Got it? Okay, all right. And in 2 Corinthians 5, somewhere down around 2021 20, and 22 it says to wit that god was in christ reconciling the world to himself that means we had a spat with god jesus came to be a peacemaker between us and god everybody believe that 
Okay, if you keep reading, it says, and he has committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. You know what part of your ministry is? Making peace. Hold, hold that. Somebody go to 2 Corinthians 5. I'm going to finish. You, you hold that. You hold that. 2 Corinthians 5, about verse 20, I think it is. Now, whoever read it, you got to talk real loud because you don't have a microphone. 2 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians 5, about somewhere around verse 20. Now then, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. We're at, what are we? We're, our, we're ambassador, an ambassador is somebody who officially represents another person. You are an official representative of Jesus Christ, which means you have to represent and stand for what Jesus stands for. We're ambassadors of Christ. As though God did beseech you, read, by us. God, God brought us into this, read. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be now before you go to reconcile somebody else, you be reconciled. Okay. You can't be the person trying to go to break up a fight and end up fighting. I've seen it happen too many times. Okay. So you be reconciled to God. Read. Because God made Jesus to be sin for all of us. Read. Jesus didn't know any sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Read. That we might be made the, righteousness. the reason Jesus was made sin, I told you about being righteousness, righteous is the kingdom of God. Jesus knew no sin, but he paid for our sins that we may become the righteousness. We are in the earth. The church is the righteousness of God. Read. Of God in, him. in him. Read on. We then, we that are reconciled and ambassadors of Jesus Christ, we work together with him. We, we beseech you also. Don't receive the grace of God. Go down to verse number 22. You at 26? Read it. I want to wit. 19? Read 19. To wit. To wit. God was in who? Christ. God was in Christ. What was God doing in Christ? He was reconciling the world unto himself. God was in Jesus because the world was lost in sin. Jesus came to settle the difference between us and God. He came as a peacemaker to make peace between us and God. Read. He didn't impute or count your trespasses of sin against you. Unto them. And then he committed to us. Here's your ministry. You got a word. You're supposed to have a word of reconciliation in your mouth. You're not supposed to join the argument. You're supposed to have a word to stop the argument. You're not supposed to join the complaint. You're supposed to have a statement of grace to stop the complaint. Did you see what she did to me? Girl, yeah, I see. Uh-uh, that's the wrong response. Did you see what he did, she did to me? Well, you know what? We need to pray for that sister. See what I'm saying? That's the grace. That's the reconciliation. Did you see what pastor did? Yeah, he always, that's the wrong response. Well, let's get together, touch and agree, and pray for our pastor. That's the right response. Peacemakers. I love peace. What about you? Amen. Amen. All right. All right, go back to that, Sister Drew. What, what, what we verse you on? 19. I'm going to start at the beginning, sort of. Okay, all right. Let it flow. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for so peace. So let's make let's follow after the things that make for peace. And things wherewith one may edify. And things another. wherewith we may edify. Edify means to build. We want to follow after the things that build people up. We don't want to tear people down. Okay. 
We don't want to tear people down. And sometimes you can tear people down without, without even trying. A passing, that's why the Bible says every idle word we talk or speak, we're going to give an account of. Because something, sometimes something you say as a passing comment that you didn't think anything of can strike somebody at the heart. So uh, that's the dangerous things about text messages. Because if you type something sarcastically, they should have an emoji on it laughing so that they know it's a joke. And if you forget the emoji, you can wound them. Something that's meant as a joke, the smiley face would have let them know it was a joke. But if you forget the smiley face, they think it's a serious comment and then there's an offense. Okay. So sometimes we don't mean to do it. That's why we got to judge that we don't put a stumbling block in anybody else's way. Amen. Please, 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 in the name of Jesus, if I say something and you don't understand it, come and ask me. Amen. Ask me. I, I try not to say anything that I can't say again. And that's a good practice. Amen. And sometimes a missing word. A missing apostrophe, a missing T can change the meaning of a whole sentence. Okay. I can stand you is just an apostrophe and a T away from I can't stand you. Are you all with me? Okay. All right. Read. For me destroy not the work of God. For meat destroys not the work of God. All things are indeed are pure. All things are pure. But it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. But if you eat and your conscience is condemned, it's evil for you. Read. It is good neither to eat flesh. It is good neither to eat flesh. Nor to drink wine. Nor to drink wine. Nor anything whereby thy brother Wait, wait, wait. Did, did you read that right? That's what it said. Okay, read that again. <laughs> It is good neither to eat flesh. It is good neither to eat flesh. Nor to drink wine. Nor to drink wine. Mm -hmm. Nor anything. Nor anything. Mm -hmm. Whereby thy brother stumbleth. That means it's not good to do anything that will cause your brother or your sister to stumble. And if, if there's a chance of them stumbling over something you do or say, eat or drink, then don't do it around them. Read. Or is offended. Or is offended. Or is made weak. Or is made weak. What verse is that? That was 21. How many verses I got? You got two. I got two more verses? All right, let's finish these two verses. Has thou faith? Do you have faith? Mm -hmm. Have it to yourself. Read. Have it to thyself before you know, God. Whoa, whoa. You know what that means? Now, that, that means work on your own faith. That's what it means. <clears throat> That doesn't mean work on the faith of your neighbor. That's my job. It's my job to work on the faith of the congregation. It's your job to work on your faith. All right. Are oh, you got it? Okay. You got faith? Have it to yourself. Mm -hmm. Have a faith that works for you is what it means. Because many times we can get caught up in trying to make faith work for other folk, and our own faith ain't working. Read. Happy is he that condemneth not himself. Happy is the man that doesn't condemn himself. In that thing which he allows. In that thing which he allows. Happy is the man who has liberty in an area but doesn't condemn himself by offending somebody with his liberty. Don't let your liberty be a stumbling block or an offense to somebody else. Right? Read. And he that doubteth is damned if he And he's, he's doubted, he that doubts, and, and if he eaten and he ain't sure about it, um, he's already damned, condemned, read. Because he eateth not of faith. Because he's not eating of faith, and anything that's not of faith, faith is, is sin. sin. So, so what it means is that our actions and our behaviors have to be on the convictions of what we believe about Scripture. I'm going to say one more thing here, and I'm going to finish. This is why superstition is so dangerous. Superstition, and the Bible makes reference to old wives' fables. And because sometimes there is conversation, you know, don't walk under a ladder. Don't let a black cat draw, you know, 
cross your path, throw salt over your shoulder and things like that. Um, those things are not scripturally based and they can take you into a belief system where you, whereby you believe something is wrong or right without the basis of scripture. I told you all about a church mother that every New Year's Day I had to leave the watch night service and be the first person to cross the threshold of her house because she believed, and watch this, she believed that you would have good luck the rest of the year if a man was the first one to cross your threshold. Come on now. There are too many things wrong with that. Number one, there's no such thing as luck. That's number one. Number two, <laughs> the man crossing your threshold, he might be bad luck. <laughs> If he, if he be he the first one in your house, the old folk, I seen, I seen a, a post today. It just tickled me so bad. Uh, it was posted by Pastor T.A. Smith. He said that his great-grandmother used to say, if somebody came to visit, they would say, uh, watch them because they light-handed. Light-handed mean that they would steal something if they came, <laughs> if they came, if they came in your house. So, so if the first person come in your house light-handed, that, that ain't no good luck, okay? And number, and number three, there's nothing in the scriptures to support that. And anytime you don't have a scriptural foundation for something, are you all ready? Y'all ain't ready for this. Anytime you believe in something that you don't have a scriptural basis for, it hinges on witchcraft. Voodoo. The old folk called it hoodoo. Yeah. So, so we don't, we don't want to go into those areas. We want to believe what the scripture says. Amen? Okay. All right. Clap your hands right there. We finished. Did we finish 14? All right. Are there any questions on 14 this evening? Thank you all for your patience this evening. All right. You all have done well. All right. Let's prepare ourselves to give this evening. Uh, those of you all that are watching by stream, there are a couple of ways that you can give. You can use your mobile phone to give. Uh, there are two applications that we use to give in the sanctuary. We use the application Givelify, and we can be found as the Abundant Love Church in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And then you can also use Cash App and our cash app hashtag is dollar sign Abundant Love Church. If you're here in the sanctuary, uh, there are a number of ways you can give. If you have a check or cash, you need an envelope. You can put it in that envelope with your name and today's date. And then if you have your debit card or your credit card and you would like to give it that way, uh, Sister Natasha has the card slider for you so you can make a contribution. Amen? All right. I want to encourage you, contribute. Let's be contributors this evening. Okay. I didn't hear any amens. Let me try that again. Let's be contributors this evening. Okay. All right. All right. Amen means let it be so. All right. So let's be a blessing to the church. Uh, the next chapter, chapter 15, will give us a lot of information about things pertaining to God. And in the next chapter, we will understand how offering pertains to the things of God. How many want to be acceptable by God? Amen. Okay. Do you, do you not understand that every time you get a, give an offering to God, it is either acceptable or unacceptable? Oh, I got, I, I, it was a slow amen coming around. Okay, but we'll learn it in the next chapter. It's, it's, it's right there in black and white. There, there are things that you can give to God that he will not accept. And then there are things that we can give to God that he'll gladly accept and receive. Amen? Okay. All right, everybody ready to give? Okay, your envelope, your phone, or your card, whatever you have, let's lift it up here. Let's pray God's blessing on it. Father, in the matchless 
the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this opportunity to give. We thank you because you have commanded us in your word that we should try you and prove you in tithes and offering. And so we give this evening knowing that your word is true and you will return it to us. Bless every giver this evening, those that are in the sanctuary and those that are giving by stream. I pray, God, for the one that would give if they had it. If they truly have the heart of a sower, put seed in their hand so that the next occasion they're able to give. We love you and we bless you in Jesus' name and the Lord's people said, thank God. Amen and amen. All right, they're coming to serve you. Everybody is giving. All right, we are absolutely looking forward to this Sunday. This Sunday is Father's Day. Amen. Father's Day is this Sunday. And so if your father is alive, you should be making plans to remember him on Father's Day. And if your father is not alive, you should have a fond memory of what he has produced and given into your life. And uh, you should have in mind men who probably stepped in and did some of the things that your father would have done. Amen. Amen. I not only have, uh, my natural father is gone. Uh, in fact, my natural father uh, has been gone about 26 or 27 years now. It's been quite a while. But I, I've had two men um, uh, actually three that stepped into my life that kind of took up his place. Uh, one was, um, I actually lost him. We buried him a couple of months ago. It was the late Pastor David Blakely. Amen. Stepped into my life and did uh, many of the things that my father did. And then I had a neighbor about six or seven years ago, um, Mr. Robert Wayford. I'll never forget uh, the contributions that he made into me in life. I got, I got one, oh, I'm, I should probably say two now men that I look forward to and honor them as a father. One is our own Deacon John Thomas. Yeah. Amen. 90 years old. So if you don't have a father to remember, remember Deacon Thomas on Sunday morning. And then um, uh, Dad Virgil Griffin. Amen. That's that's my dad. He call I get we call and we talk two or three times a week and he is so encouraging to me. And encouraging and so um so I just when my father did die 27 years ago, that morning I got up, I picked up the phone to call my father and then it dawned on me. My father's not there. I couldn't call him. So when I came to church, I was a little I was a little down and I mentioned in the sanctuary uh, that I picked my phone up to call my dad, and he wasn't there to call. And after service, he didn't do anything while the service was going on. After service was over, Dad Griffin came up to me and said, Son, he said on Sunday morning, he said on Father's Day, he said, if you don't have nobody to call, he said, you can call me. And so I have. I just call. I, I, every Father's Day, he's the one I call now. And so uh, whatever father figures in your life uh, you want to uh, you want to remember them. You want to honor them. We want to honor some of these young men, too, that are just learning. Amen. Learning to be fathers. You know, there's no manual book to be a father. There, there's no parent manual. Amen. The closest thing you get is the Bible. And there are some things even the Bible don't specifically address. But you have to try to use the wisdom of God as you rear your children. Amen. Okay. All right. Everybody have a chance to give? Okay, all right. Are there any announcements? Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen.
Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> all right. Any other announcements? May we all stand. All right. There were no questions or comments on the stream, was there? Okay. All right. Bless the Lord. All right. Look over at somebody. Say, I love you. Tell them, say, good enough to give you a kiss, but not right now. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Let's pray and be dismissed here tonight, this evening rather. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word and we thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you for this survey through the New Testament. We thank you particularly for this teaching in the book of Romans chapter 14 this evening. Uh, here is my prayer, God. My prayer is that the word would not just be something that we say amen to, but that it would come as full truth for us to pursue and to obey. I pray that each of us would be mindful that we don't put a stumbling block in anybody's way, that we don't do anything to cause anybody to stumble out of the way of holiness. In fact, help us to edify and to pursue the things uh, that make for peace among us as the people of God. We thank you for the peace that Jesus made between us and God. So help us uh, to accept the ministry and the word of reconciliation whereby we can do as the good Samaritan did. Come alongside the person that is injured, pour in wine and oil for cleansing and healing back to full health. Now, as we leave this place uh, this particular day, uh, I pray for this upcoming Father's Day and for the fathers that are here. I even pray uh, for those of us that may have a missing father or a strained relationship with our father, or not a peaceful relationship, maybe a turbulent relationship with our father. We thank you for the anointing and prophetic word on Sunday that there's an open door and an anointing to restore relationships and build back bridges. Give them an opportunity to build a peaceful and a loving bridge whereby they can enjoy what that relationship would offer. And as we leave this place this evening to go home, uh, let everything be found well and in place when we get there. Watch between us until we are able to come together again. In Jesus' name, the Lord's people said, thank God. Amen. And amen. Shake hand with your neighbor and say, God bless you.